the best video settings for vlogging on an iPhone. Let's get right into it. Video is sponsored by Squarespace. You're gonna open up your settings. We're gonna go through these one by one. I'm gonna explain them one by one. I'm gonna tell you when to use them, when to turn them off. What I like to keep my stuff set on basically at all times. Go to settings, scroll down the whole way to camera, tap on camera, bam. We got all this stuff to discuss. First, we're gonna tap into formats. I leave mine on high efficiency. If you're using Windows, then you should probably go to most compatible, but if you're on the Mac system, you edit on Mac, most of your friends have Apple devices, leave it on high efficiency. Even, I would say, even if you are on Windows, you could probably leave it on high efficiency. It's just gonna save space. It's a little bit better file. Uh, the compression's better, so leave it on high efficiency. Apple Pro Raw is a photo thing. That's raw photos. We're not gonna touch on that. They do take up more space, similar to Apple ProRes, which is sort of like the video version of that, though many steps down. It's not raw video, but it is the highest quality video that you can get with an iPhone. I keep this turned off at all times. I don't use Apple ProRes. For the most part, if you're posting stuff on the internet, the files that come out of this camera are fine as is and you don't need that extra quality. Keep it simple. You gotta remember that because like this is a phone you're shooting with. You're just, you're telling good stories. Focusing on the stories. Record video, that second one. Okay. Now, here we got a bunch of options. First three options are all HD and I made the decision that I want all of my stuff to be 4K. I shoot my big camera on 4K. I shoot my phone on 4K. Um, 720 is obviously the smallest that's 720 pixels on the short side of a video, then up to 1080. I'm gonna talk about 4K, but this stuff would apply to HD as well. Just keep in mind, HD is a smaller screen size, so you're just getting slightly less resolution. 4K is 1,920 pixels on the short side by 3,840 pixels on the long side, so it's a big, picture that we're working with and that's what I really love to use. We got 24, we got 30, and we got 60. As you can see, 24 is checked on my phone and that is because that is the look that I prefer. 24 frames per second is generally thought of as the cinematic or Hollywood style movie frames per second. Now there's a lot of people who like the look of 30 frames per second. I think 30 frames per second looks like a soap opera and it's because they were shot in 29.97, 30 frames per second, and that's how they were broadcast and so it has has a negative connotation for me. Now, maybe you like soap operas, or maybe you just like the kind of slightly smoother look of 30 frames per second. Some very notable people on YouTube as a platform love the look of 30 frames per second, so there's nothing wrong with it. It's really preference. Compare these two examples. If you like the smoothness of 30, by all means use it. If you like the look of 24, by all means, choose it. Now up at 60, you're getting twice as many frames per second. So that's, you know, photos captured per second as you are with 30 and I'm not sure what the math is on 24, but more, more than twice as, as many. And so this works really well for stuff like sports, for stuff with a lot of motion. If you want it to look really smooth, if you're into gaming, if you're used to looking at gaming, 60 frames per second probably looks pretty normal and natural to you. The cool thing about 60 frames per second is that when you're editing, you can put it in a 24 or a 30 frame per second timeline and slow it down either 50 or 60 percent and that's really cool that gives you leverage but the issue with shooting in 60 is that your file sizes are going to be much bigger so for me for the most part you know talking head stuff most of the stuff I capture with my kids and my family and my friends I'm not planning on slowing it down and I like that shooting 24 gives me more space and I like the look of 24 so for me that's why I shoot the majority of my stuff at 24 frames a second keep it on moving show pal formats if you live somewhere where the lights are flickering when you're in 24 frames per second, you could turn on PAL formats. That'll give you the 25 frames per second option and you'll see those lights stop flickering. HDR video. I do not like the look of or think the technology is there yet for iPhone HDR video. I just keep it turned off at all times. It makes it easier to edit when I put it on my computer. It makes it look better in my opinion when I put a clip like straight on Instagram or straight on Twitter. I don't think HDR is there yet. So keep an eye on that for the future. Maybe that's gonna get better with future releases of the phone. But in my opinion, just keeping HDR off and not ever thinking about it again is the best option. Lock camera, I leave that turned off. And the reason is when I'm zooming in or zooming out, I want the cameras here to switch. I want the camera to switch between, you know, the different lenses. If you turn on lock camera, it won't when you zoom in and zoom out while you're recording a video. And for me, that's just ease of use. Like if I'm, you know, I use this as my quick grab camera often. If I just need to get a clip, like in the second, I pull it out and if I zoom 
way out to 0.5 or zoom way into three, I want it to switch to the highest quality camera so that I get the highest quality image eventually. So that's why I leave that turned off. All right, we're cruising, okay? Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going to slow-mo, okay? Now, slow-mo, we got two options, both HD, 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second. So that's exactly what it sounds like. 240 is twice as slow as 120. I keep my phone on 120 frames per second because I like the quality of that 120 FPS image a lot better than the 240 frame per second image. So you can do your own tests if you want, but I I generally find I would prefer higher quality and a slightly faster slow-mo than lower quality and a slower slow-mo. There's maybe a couple instances where I've switched to 240 just to get like, try to capture something super fast and, and really slow it down. But for the most part, I think 120 is more than capable and I like the way it looks a lot better. On Squarespace, you're gonna be able to create an amazing website using a professional template that you love, that already works, that is just plug and play. Like you can just use that thing as is. And then they've added Fluid Engine, which is drag and drop, completely reimagined. If you love to dive in and be able to customize like that, highly recommend you try it out. And of course, your website's gonna work on desktop. It's also gonna work on mobile. You can accept appointments. You can offer private sessions. You can do workshops all right through your Squarespace site. And when you wanna see what's working, what's not, how you should maybe shift your strategy, the analytics suite inside Squarespace is fantastic. If you wanna try it out, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Warner. And then when you're ready to buy, use the code Cody Warner to get 10% off your domain or website purchase. Record stereo sound. Now I keep this turned off because I'm used to a shotgun mic. I'm used to just, I'm used to just kind of a mono signal of, especially when I'm someone's talking to the camera, when I'm talking to the camera, I just want to make sure that you can hear what I'm saying or that the subject's audio is being captured. Stereo for me, because it has this kind of cool effect. Stereo sound is going to sound like pretty different when I'm over here versus if I'm the whole way over here talking giving you spatial audio, it just sometimes ends up giving me audio that I don't like for the type of videos that I create, which again is mostly stuff for social media. So if we click into the preserve settings, you'll see that I have creative controls off, everything else on. And the reason I keep creative controls off is because I don't use creative controls. So sometimes I accidentally toggle them on. So then it's really easy to just close the camera, open it back up and the creative controls are off. One thing that I will say that, that this made me think of is when when we go over here to the actual camera, I have for video, my exposure turned down to negative 0.07. You tap that button up at the top, you know, you see that you can move that around. I find that for the most part, the camera, both in photo and video mode, overexposes slightly. So I keep that down to negative 0.07 and that gives me a look on my videos that I tend to like more. And that gets saved because I have exposure adjustment turned on here. So that's something that I think you could potentially do if if you feel like your phone is constantly overexposing stuff. Moving down here the whole way to the bottom at composition, uh, I have grid turned on. That just helps me to keep subjects more in the center of the frame if I'm doing a, a center framed thing or if I'm putting stuff on one of those intersections of the lines and doing something on the thirds. It just gives you kind of more guidance on where is something in my frame and so I like that. Down at the bottom there, I have lens correction on and that is because the ultra wide on this is gonna distort your image and I trust Apple's algorithm to be able to undistort it better than my ability to be able to undistort it. So that's why I have that on. Last one, macro control. I have that turned on and that's so I can tap whether I want macro or don't want macro. I've just noticed that often the phone doesn't give it to me when I want it and does give it to me when I don't want it. So I like to be able to kind of control that myself. Those are the settings that I use, the ones that I love. If there's something that you like differently, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you want to know how to vlog on an iPhone, highly recommend you watch this video next. I will see you there.